Having a good understanding of your finances is obviously pretty important to living the ultimate life that you want to live. So with that, you'd assume that our education system is pretty good at teaching students the ins and outs of handling their money, right? Well, not really. I think it's pretty obvious that that critical financial education is not really something that's offered in schools right now. When I look back on my high school experience, I definitely learned a lot of skills, with a lot of those being soft skills like work ethic and the ability to learn, but I don't think the actual subjects I was learning about have that much application in my day-to-day -day life. Which does not mean they were not important, but I know myself and many others would have been much better off if we talked more about careers, managing money, and building wealth. So since this is not primarily covered in schools, I wanted to go over five critical financial lessons that you need to learn in your 20s. You should also hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. We're also trying to get to 350 subscribers, so I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, before we start talking about the things you need to do, let's first talk about something not to do or something to avoid or be careful with. When you turn 18, you suddenly have access to debt and people may be actively pushing you into going into debt. For example, early in your life, student loans may be presented to you as a good way to pay for your education. Or you might be tempted to inflate your lifestyle by purchasing things with a credit card, even if you can't afford to pay off your whole balance every month. Or, and this is a common one, once you graduate from college, you might be tempted to go and take out a loan to buy your dream car. My point is the opportunity for debt is everywhere. And if you're not careful, you can create a really horrible financial situation for yourself very quickly. So the first lesson you need to learn in your 20s is how powerful debt can be. And this includes situations where you should avoid debt and situations where debt might be okay. Let's talk about debt that you need to avoid first. Again, for a lot of people, the first time debt is presented to them is when they're going to college and they have the option of taking out student Student loans. And when we consider that the average federal student loan has a balance of over $37,000, we realize how concerning this trend actually is. Student loans seem to be something that's widely considered to just be part of a normal life. We've almost normalized it in a way. But keep in mind that it takes the average student loan borrower almost 20 years to pay off their student loan completely. That's a really long-term commitment for someone who signs a piece of paper when they're only 18. So I wish we could normalize pursuing education that does not not require these loans. That might involve going to a public in-state university, and in-state schools are still some of the best schools in the country. Or it might involve starting at a community college while you're doing your general classes and still trying to figure out what you want to study. A lot of community colleges actually have programs that will allow you to easily transfer to a full four-year university later on. Now, there may be some scenarios where taking out a student loan makes sense, especially if you're considering pursuing further education like medical school or a law degree or something like that. But we need to do more to show the upcoming generation that there's more options out there than going to an expensive private school and taking out a lot of student loan debt. Other than student loans, the other key mistake that people make is using debt to inflate their lifestyle. And this is always going to get you into trouble. We're not gonna get too specific here because that's for another video. But in my opinion, the biggest thing you need to be careful with is credit cards and cars. When you're in your 20s, it's very easy to feel like you want to enjoy the finer things in life. You wanna buy nice clothes, you wanna travel, you wanna do fun stuff with your friends, and you feel like you want to enjoy all of the pleasures of life right in that moment. And none of those things are inherently bad on their own. But the real problem is when you feel like you need to experience all of those right now, and you overextend yourself financially to do it. So you just have to be really careful. If you ever find that you're carrying a balance on your credit card from month to month and not paying it off in full, then that's a sign that you cannot handle having credit cards and you're using debt in a very irresponsible way. And you also need to be super careful with cars. Don't go finance your dream car right away. There will be time later on in life where you've accumulated a good amount of wealth where you'll be able to go and buy that car and truly enjoy it because you're not stressed out about making the monthly payment on it. But moving on, part of understanding debt is also understanding where debt might be okay. And in my opinion, the primary acceptable form of debt is obviously getting a mortgage on your primary home. I think that home ownership is a key aspect of establishing financial stability, and it's a great option for those who are ready for it financially. 
In order to qualify for a good mortgage, you're also going to need to know how to build a solid credit score. And we could spend all day talking about that. So instead, I'm just gonna link a video right here that goes over how I achieved a credit score of 800. But to close out this discussion on debt, I just wanna drive the point home that you just need to be careful. Because again, taking out debt is very easy. In some cases, it can just take minutes. You just have to sign the papers. But those who find themselves trapped under piles of debt will learn that it is much harder and takes much longer longer to actually get out of it. You'll also find that you should hit that subscribe button. Again, we're trying to get to 350 subscribers, so I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay, this one is gonna sound like a bit of a cliche, but we have to mention it because it's true. But the second lesson that you need to learn early on in your 20s is the value of the dollar. Let's talk a little bit about why this is important. Money is essentially an exchange of value. So in theory, you could create value through working a job, and in return, someone would pay you the amount of money that's equal to the value that you produced. You can then use that money to go and exchange it for things that are of value to you. And if you truly understand the effort that it takes to actually earn that money, I find that you'll be much better at managing responsibly and not wanting to just blow it all in one place. This becomes clear when you consider that most lottery winners end up blowing through all their earnings. According to Next Gen Personal Finance, one third of lottery winners eventually have to declare for bankruptcy. And I truly think it's because they don't understand the value of that money that they just won. And that's not to say that they don't deserve it. But when you receive an immediate windfall of cash like that, you didn't put forth the effort to earn that money and therefore you don't really understand what you're holding on to. And that makes it really easy to just let go of it and spend it. It's easy to go spend a hundred grand on a new boat in that scenario because you didn't feel the burden of earning that $100,000. So that's the reason why you need to learn the value of the dollar. Now let's talk about how you learn the value of the dollar. Well, really the only way is through working in my opinion. Getting a job will allow you to directly correlate how much money you have with how hard you worked for it. So you'll be able to assign an effort level with that money and you'll value it more yourself. And I can almost guarantee you that you will look at money very differently after this happens. Another tip is that whenever you want to buy something nice for yourself, put it in terms of how long you would have to work to actually afford that item. So if you wanted a pair of shoes that were $200 and you work for $20 an hour, then theoretically you would be trading 10 hours of work for that pair of shoes. Maybe that's worth it to you, maybe it's not. But that mindset will help you truly evaluate the value of the things that you're purchasing. This next lesson is along the same lines, but speaking of spending money on stuff that you want, you also really need to learn to be okay with delayed gratification, which is essentially the concept of putting off an immediate reward and instead working towards a greater reward at some point in the future. Now I wanna clarify because this is definitely a balance because life is short and you should be doing things that you enjoy right now. But a lot of Americans find themselves in bad situations because they jumped the gun on rewarding themselves with materialistic things. It's really easy to get a quick hit of joy when you overspend on something, but you've got to learn how to put that off when you're in the process of building wealth. And this one is hard to teach because there's not really a concept that I can teach you or tell you about that will help with delayed gratification. I ultimately think it's just part of growing up and looking deep within yourself to see if you genuinely have a problem with impulse spending, and if so, developing better habits to put off some of that spending. But if you're able to save money because you're not blowing it all on just impulse spending, you're going to be a lot better off because of it. Okay, the fourth lesson that you need to learn in your 20s is how to operate with a wealth-based mindset instead of an income-based mindset. Think about it. If you were to describe someone that you knew who was financially well off, how would you phrase it? Well, you probably mentioned something around the fact that they make a lot of money. Or if you want to be financially successful, you probably picture yourself in some high paying job and most of your goals are likely centered around how to achieve that job. And there's nothing wrong with striving for a high income because at the end of the day, you are going to need an income to build wealth and the more income you have, theoretically, the faster that wealth building journey is going to be. But you have to remember, income is only one aspect of personal finance. And if it's the only thing that you're focused on, you might be in trouble. I think a much better way to measure your financial well-being is to look at your overall net worth, which can be calculated by taking the total value of all your assets 
and subtracting it from the total value of your liabilities. Assets would be anything that you own that has value like a home, cars, stocks, cool baseball cards, etc. And liabilities are typically in the form of debt that you owe. So things like a mortgage, credit cards, student loans, etc. And I think the reason net worth is a better metric of financial success is because it's actually looking at how much money you have. Where with income, if you're only focusing on how much money you're bringing in, you're only looking at one side of the personal finance equation. Remember, half of Americans earning over $100,000 a year still live paycheck to paycheck. So just because someone has a decent income doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually wealthy. And if your focus is on net worth, that will also incentivize you to adopt better spending habits and dedicate more of your income towards investing and building your net worth. And that brings us to the last lesson that we're gonna talk about in this video. The fifth financial lesson that you need to learn in your 20s is how to invest. Before we jump into the specifics on this, I just wanna call out that I am not personally a certified financial advisor. And before you ever invest in anything on your own, make sure you do your own research. And if you need to, make sure you do talk to a financial advisor. But anyway, investing is ultimately gonna be your ticket to achieving financial independence. And unfortunately, investing is just something that most Americans Americans do not do enough of. According to Bankrate, the median 401k balance for Americans age 65 and over is only $88,000, which is not going to be nearly enough to fully support you in retirement. The great news is, is that because of index funds and target date retirement funds, investing is actually easier than ever. But the point I wanna drive home in this video is that you need to start investing as soon as possible so that you can take advantage of compound interest. And to really highlight the urgency behind why you need to start as soon as possible, Let's look at the following example. Let's say you wanted to have $1 million invested by the time you turned 65. Here's how much you would have to invest every month depending on which age you start at throughout your life. And for this, let's assume an average annual rate of return of 8%. And spoiler alert, it gets exponentially harder over time. So in order to have a million dollars invested, if you started at age 20, you would have to invest $215 every month. If you wait until you turn 25, you'd have to invest $321 a month, which is a lot higher than it would have been if you started at age 20, but it's still a relatively small amount. If you start at age 30, you'd have to invest $483 a month. And note that if you start at age 30, it will take more than double the amount in contributions to reach the same goal than if you started at age 20. At age 40, it jumps even higher to $1,139 every month. And if you start at age 50, you'd have to contribute a whopping $3,069 every month. And that hurts just thinking about. These numbers essentially show us that every decade we put off investing means it's going to be twice as hard for us to achieve the same goal. So at the end of the day, it really just comes down to starting as early as you can. And anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this video? Was it helpful? Is there anything I said that you disagree with as part of this video? Remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.